Hey, what's up, guys? So the video you guys are about to watch right now is a mental DPS loadout slash guide. This is the best one on server. I've did a lot of testing with this, and this video is long, so I put timestamps down in the description and into the comments as well. But with further ado, watch this video, enjoy mental DPS, and let's go. What's going on, YouTube? It is OG Mentor TG in here, and today I'm gonna be bringing you guys the best mental DPS loadout overall to use on DC Universe Online. Now, I don't mean this figuratively. I don't mean this as if like the most damage. I'm saying to you guys the best loadout and DCO to use for mental overall. Not these two pie loadouts. Not the invisibility with the uh, mass terror and the you know critical menace and all of that inside of that invisibility this is going to be the standard three pi loadout that you guys are going to be using psychic resonance uh you know telekinetic push phantom flames and psychic shock mass terror grand or mass terror uh now watch this video uh because i'm going to be showing you the loadout first i'm going to be giving you bits and pieces to use in order to get the most damage and the easiest damage out of your character for this loadout and pretty much I'm be showing you guys why this is the best loadout overall on this game and without further ado let's go ahead and get into it so G Mentor TGN and let's go ahead and start off so for starters uh, we're gonna head straight into powers and we're gonna head into telekinesis and you guys are gonna want to get everything you see in this tree exactly the way I've got it you want to get everything I have you want to get telekinesis telekinetic push psychic resonance telekinetic bolt and you want to get mass levitation I'm gonna be showing you guys this long-range loadout as well with the one that I have on right now just in case if you guys ever do need to fight from afar uh, after you're done with telekinesis you want to go right into illusion and from illusion you're gonna grab everything that I have right here uh, as you guys can see I have invisibility I have mass hysteria and I have Menace Vault. And these things I'm going to be showing you guys at the end of the video uh, to add on to your character in case if you ever want to go and try something out that could give you a little tiny bit of a boost in damage. So other than that, you know, you're going to get everything exactly as I have purchased in this tree. Uh, Terra Tendrils, Psychic Shock, Phantom Flames, Mass Terror, uh, you know, Grand Door, Menace, uh, Mass Hysteria, and your Invisibility. After you are done going and grabbing everything out of that tree, you want to uh, back out of that, go into your iconic powers, go on the bottom right, grab your weapons expert, and you want to grab your tactical genius, so you can get obviously your 3% critical attack chance and your attack damage for 10%. And after you guys are done getting all of this, you want to back out, you want to go to loadouts, go to damage. Now, from left to right, uh, you guys don't have to use it the way I use it. The way I use it is pretty much for the highest of the uh, expert level for this loadout. Uh, if you guys want to start off, use Phantom Flames first instead of Telekinetic Push. You want to go Phantom Flames, Telekinetic Push, Psychic Shock, Grand Door, Mass Terror, and then Psychic Resonance. After you guys are done getting your loadout from left to right exactly as the way I've set it, or if you want, you can get it the way I have it right here. Uh, after that, you guys are going to want to pretty much, uh, once you're done, I'll stay here for a little bit. I'm going to back out of this. I'm going to show you how to use the loadout. Uh, and then pretty much after you guys get the loadout down hand, you're done practicing. We're going to start clipping this uh, video and we're going to be adding bits and pieces of things you can do to increase your damage and pretty much to, you know, get you to having the best loadout of uh, any other mental DPS loadout on this game. So after you guys are done from left to right, telekinetic push, phantom flame, psychic shock, grand door, mass terror, psychic resonance, uh, you guys are going to want to go ahead and back out of your loadouts. Ignore everything I have for my bots, ignore all of these, because I'm going to be showing you exactly how to use these at the end of the video, as well with the Mass Terror uh, Grand Door exploit that uh, pretty much everyone's using with Weapon Mastery, which is kind of complicated for new players, which is why I'm only going to be showing you this part right now, and if you're more interested, come back towards the end of the video, and uh, pretty much, yeah, then you'll go ahead and be able to learn everything that I do. 
Now, starting off, you start off your loadout by using Psychic Resonance, which amplifies uh, pretty much your advanced mechanic, which is going to help you uh, get your big hit off with Mass Terror. Uh, in English, because I'm pretty sure people didn't understand what that meant, uh, you're going to want to use your Psychic Resonance in order to get big hits off of Mass Terror. Once you pop Psychic Resonance, you're going to want to use the first three powers, as you can see, that I'm using right now. One, two, three, to charge up your Mass Terror's big hit. So every time you use these three powers, it's pretty much giving you a big charge in order to do the burst hit with Mass Terror. So as you see, it's like charge one, charge two, charge three, big hit. Charge one, charge two, charge three, big hit. Now, as you guys can see as well, we have Grand Door in my loadout in the middle on L2X. And pretty much, uh, I'm not sure what it is for uh, PC, I believe it's just number four. Uh, for L2X, uh, pretty much Grand Door just amplifies up to three charges automatically off bat. So you don't have to go and pop your resonance and go one, two, three into the Mass Terror. All you would have to do is pop Grand Door and then hit Mass Terror and it will automatically give you a big hit off bat. Now, the times that you want to use Grandor is pretty much after you're done going 1, 2, 3 on your charge, you hit Mass Terror. Then you want to pop the Grandor, which is obviously on cooldown. And then you want to pop Mass Terror again to get two big hits. So it will look like this. 1, 2, 3, Mass Terror, Grandor, Mass Terror. So that way you can get two big hits off really quick back to back. That's pretty much the basic loadout. That's what you guys are going to want to be uh, using today. And we're going to be experimenting with this loadout. And at the end of the videos, we're going to start throwing extra things in. And uh, pretty much, I'm going to try to teach this to you guys as easy as I can so you guys can get to where I'm at right now when it comes to doing loadouts. But uh, other than that, that's the basic one. And uh, let's go ahead and get into more in depth with this loadout. Okay, now starting off with the very first thing that I have to teach you guys with this loadout. As you guys can see on the bottom right of my screen, I have three bots. I have the broker bot, I have the mail bot, and I have the proto repair bot. Now these three bots are going to help you go through your loadout a lot quicker if you follow off of what I'm going to be doing today. Now this is going to be a little bit harder uh, for certain players, so if you guys need be want to switch around the loadout at the very bottom to uh make it more easier for you to clip with uh clipping is pretty much you know using two powers uh instantly to help you go through your loadout a lot quicker uh then you feel free to go ahead and swap your loadout around to make this a lot more comfortable so automatically off bat number one to increase your damage uh bots uh, the way bots work is pretty much, I'm going to show you guys right now, I'm going to show you exactly how I do my loadout, and I'm going to show you what it does. Now as you guys can see, I went through my loadout extremely fast with that. I went through my loadout is super quick with uh, the bots that I have. Now these bots, um, if you don't have these bots, any bots really work. Mainframe bots, uh, proto repair bots, bank bots, mail bots, any bot that you can think of that has a cooldown time as you can see on the bottom, like I'm putting it out. Uh, you want to use those bots. Now. Pretty much, uh, if you guys want, don't use three of these bots. Use about one of them uh, to start off. So, you know, when you're starting off doing your loadout, only use one bot. And, you know, try to get used to using one bot at first. You know, go through, do your loadout, and every time your bot is available, you want to clip that bot with the second power uh, that you guys can see in my loadout. You want to clip it, pop it, jump, go into using the third power, and then hit Mass Terror. And uh, pretty much it's supposed to look exactly like this.
Now, that is something that will help you go through your loadout a lot quicker, help you do a lot more damage, and that is the Proto Repair Bot uh, tip. I'd say it's a tip. It's not a glitch or anything. It's just a tip to get you guys to do extra damage. And uh, pretty much, yeah, you guys got to practice that. Use that exactly with the loadout that I've taught you guys uh, at the beginning of this video, and you will be able to do your loadouts a lot quicker and do a lot of damage. Alright guys, moving on to the next one that I'm going to be showing you guys is the Weapon Mastery. Now, Weapon Mastery, it looks exactly like I'm going to show you guys right now. It looks like this. And what you guys are seeing that I've just done on screen is the Weapon Mastery. Uh, people will call it an exploit, but it's just Weapon Mastery with your Grand Door into your Mass Terror. And uh, this helps your Mass Terror hit like crazy, crazy hard. Rather it be if you're in solos, duos, alerts, or raids. Uh, and pretty much I'm going to teach you guys how to do this. Uh, for starters though, when you guys do learn how to do this, you do not want to use your Psychic Resonance when you're you know, doing your Weapon Mastery with this. Because it will not give you a crit as you guys just saw on screen. It will not give you anything at all. So uh, just follow off of exactly the way I spec. Um, for people who do not have one-handed, uh, you can kind of try to follow off of what I'm doing, but uh, pretty much uh, I'm going to explain to you guys exactly how this is done today. So you're going to want to go to skills, go to weapons, and for people who have one-handed, if you don't have one-handed, just follow off of whatever weapon you have and follow what I'm going to tell you. Uh, what you guys are going to want to do is you're going to want to get, as you can see on the top right for one-handed, you're going to want to get one-handed mastery. Now, this is Weapon Mastery, obviously. You want to get one-handed Weapon Mastery. Uh, you want to get everything that it requires to get one-handed Weapon Mastery. The 20 skill points spent in one-handed. The Air Launch, Spin Chop, Flip Slash. And uh, pretty much that's about it. And once you have 20 skill points spent in this tree, at least, you want to grab the one-handed Mastery on the top right. And you want to back out of this. Go into Hand Blasters. You're going to want to go and get... You know, obviously, 20 skill points at least spent inside of your hand blasters. As well, you're going to want to get the combos, fist slam, uppercut, solar flame, and meteor blast. And once you have gotten that, you're going to want to lock, you know, hand blaster master on the top right. Which, uh, then, you're going to want to back out of this again. Go into one-handed. And by the time you have done uh, getting all the combos and everything that are needed, this combo right here at the very bottom of your tree, Solar Flame Mastery, should be unlocked. Which was the power that you seen me do earlier that looked exactly like this. Or not power, but the combo. Now, for other people who have uh, different weapons, rather be brawling, pretty much look on the top right. Uh, see what it requires for you to get Weapon Master on the weapon that you're using. Uh, check the combos at the bottom of your screen. Preferably try to get one that is easy for you to use. Most people use uh, one-handed weapon mastery or brawling weapon mastery. Seeing that they are the two quickest weapon masteries to get a lot of damage out with. So if you're one-handed and brawling, uh, follow off of whatever combo it is that is like triangle triangle for uh, both of those weapons. As you see for this one, it's whole triangle twice. I believe for brawling, it is tap and whole triangle twice. You want to ignore this whole triangle twice on brawling. You want to get tap and whole triangle if you're using brawling weapon mastery. Because it is the quickest one and it'll help you get the most damage out the fastest before anyone else does. So, as you guys can see, this is the brawling weapon mastery uh, exploit, glitch, whatever you guys want to call it. I'd say it's the brawling and one-handed weapon mastery. Uh, you can use it on any other weapon, but pretty much this will also help you guys get a lot of damage out inside of your raids. So go ahead and moving on to the next thing I'm going to be showing you guys is pretty much gear mods. I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how I mod my gear, uh, you know, pretty much what white sockets to put in it, and uh, you know, pretty much what you guys should be using in your gear to uh, do damage. Alrighty guys, so moving on to showing you guys exactly what you should have in your gear to do damage. Uh, as you guys can see, starting off, I have all eight pieces of elite gear, which uh, pretty much having all eight pieces gives me the affinity mod bonuses, as you guys can see on the top right of my uh, character. 
Uh, type A mod gives me more might. Type B mod gives me more might. And type C and D really aren't that useful except for maybe survivability. And uh, pretty much it. You guys are just going to follow off of the gear that I have here. If you are at the end tier and you know you have your 192 have everything i have uh even if you're not 192 you guys are going to want to mod and you're going to put your white sockets in exactly the way i put them in for most of these uh for most of these sockets that you guys are seeing uh now modding wise you're going to want to put might and power olympian into your shoulders because it gives you a critical ability attack chance a uh, critical ability attack chance is used mainly for your powers uh, seeing we are might base, we're not going to be worrying about our weapon at all. So you're going to want to get might and power Olympian or might and power whatever it is that you can afford to get and put it in your shoulders so you can get that critical ability attack chance completed. If you don't have enough for that, get some synthetics, throw like a synthetic uh, power in it, and yeah, you should be good then. Uh, you want to mod might inside of your hands. As you guys can see in my hands, I have max damage as well. Uh, you want to get that white socket from your base. If you don't know how to get the uh, generator mods from your base or the uh, mainframe mods, I suggest you look that up because the white mods are very important in this game and they're only acquired from your mainframe at your base, which requires marks of uh, victory. So as you guys see in my hands, I have max damage, might Olympian, and my waist, I have might Olympian, and my feet, I have might Olympian with explosive block. And my ring, I have my Olympian. And my other ring, I have my Olympian. Uh, and my legs, I have uh, Restorative Phantom Flames for my White Socket, which is the new uh, mod that came out recently for the Starro event. As well, I have Might and Health Olympian uh, modded so I can get the Critical Ability Attack Chance because we are Might based. Uh, in my chest piece, I have Penetrating Strikes. And my Olympian. Now, uh, with penetrating strikes, a lot of people say that core strength is a lot better. Uh, I'm going to let you guys know for anybody who is an expert who is watching this video uh, that pretty much the way that penetrating strikes and core strength works. Core strength, you only want to use core strength if your combat rating is pretty much, uh, you know, if the people you're fighting's uh, combat rating is lower than yours. So core strength you want to put into your chest piece if you are a higher combat rating than the enemies you are fighting. And with penetrating strikes, you want to put in your chest piece if the enemies you are fighting are a higher combat rating than you are. Now, uh, this will help is so you can do more damage on higher enemies. You can take them down a lot quicker and you can burn through uh, the raid or alert or duo or solo that you're doing a lot easier. Core strength, you want to use that if the enemies are a lower combat rating than you are, so you can go and pretty much take them out easy without like a flinch. But I uh, pretty much put penetrating strikes in your chest piece. Uh, in my back piece, I have Berserker, which increases my damage by an extra 30% if my health falls below 35%. Uh, in my neck piece, I have Escalating Might, which increases your might by 3% for 8 seconds each time you're hitting an enemy with a harmful superpower. And this effect can only stack up three times, and it does not work with other supercharged powers. Uh, in my headpiece, I'm using uh, Energized Psychic Shock because I normally am not going to be using the other loadout that I'm going to show to you guys, which does a little bit more damage than this one does, but it's not the best one overall. It's complicated to use, and a lot of people do not like when you're using uh, the stealth loadout, which is what I'm talking about uh, when it comes to doing raids or anything that inquires more than, like, for people so if I were you guys uh, if you're sticking with the regular uh, three ply with the mass uh, terror and just you know the psychic resonance and the grand door uh, get energized psychic shock if you're interested in using the stealth out that I'm gonna be showing you guys at the very end of this video as just a little tip to do more damage uh, get critical menace and put that into your headpiece so other than that uh, that's pretty much what you're gonna be using for your headpiece and for your weapon, obviously, you guys already saw as when I did the uh, critical uh, weapon mastery thing with the mass hair and the grand door, I use one handed with the mod Blast Adapter. Blast Adapter makes it so attacks have a chance to blast your target and five other nearby enemies for additional damage. And this effect only may occur once every 60 seconds. So, pretty much, uh, if you guys mod your character, with the uh, mods that you saw I put in 
and with the uh, white sockets that I put in, uh, you guys should be also doing a big, big, significant, huge amount of uh, damage against other people that you're uh, playing against. So, as I've said to you before, uh, remember this, penetrating strikes is only good for if uh, the enemy are a higher combat rating than you are, and core strength is good for if the enemy is a lower combat rating than you are. So, uh, remember that, keep that in mind, that is exactly how I spec my gear, and uh, other than that, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. The next one I'm going to be showing you guys is exactly how I do my skill points. This may be a bit complicated for you guys because... The way that I do my skill points, seeing I have 300 plus of them, uh, you know, it's I have enough to pretty much get everything. Uh, but I'm going to be showing you guys, for the people who don't have that many skill points, what to get. Uh, and let's go ahead and move on to the next part then. Alrighty guys, so moving on to the skill points. The way that I spec my skill points is pretty much, obviously you want to get your movement mode first. Uh, after you're done getting your movement mode, you want to go into your weapons. And when you spec, uh, this is for anybody. This is for absolutely anyone. It doesn't matter if you're precision base, might base, whatever. You're always going to want to spec into your criticals first. So if you want to learn how to spec your skill points in, spec your criticals first. Uh, as you see, I got critical attack damage in this tree. Uh, you go four down here, get critical attack chance. Four down here, critical attack damage. Four down on dual pistols critical attack damage and just keep getting all of your critical attack damages and you know your chance and after you are done getting all of your critical attack chances and your critical attack damage is done you're gonna go and start working on your might now uh, after you're done getting all of those things you wanna go and start looking for might in your trees don't worry because uh, you see me purchase precision don't purchase it uh, because this is pretty much uh, leftover, you know, skill points that I had to spend. So go through all of your weapons. As you can see, I have might here. You're going to want to purchase the might out of your brawling. You're going to look for other uh, powers or other weapons that have might in them. I believe dual wield has might in it. You want to go to dual wield. Get your might out of your dual wield. Leave out a dual wield. I think hand blasters have precision. You want to leave that alone. Go to martial arts. Uh, there's might in martial arts. Get might out of that. Uh, go into your rifle. Rifle doesn't have a uh, might in it, so you can back out of that. Go into your shield. Get the might here. Uh, go into your staff. Get the. Uh, there's no might in the staff. Go to two-handed, and get the might in two-handed. And pretty much after you're done getting all your criticals and your might, you're gonna start working on your weapon mastery. Or not your weapon master, but you're going to work on the stats that are at the very bottom of the tree. As you guys can see at the bottom of the tree, if I'm going too fast for you guys, just pause the video, uh, work on everything I was telling you guys to work on, and then come back when you're ready. So uh, when it comes to doing all of the uh, stats that are at the very bottom of these trees, uh, people call them the weapon mastery stats, uh, you don't need to get weapon mastery in order to get these. You just need to have at least 21 skill points spent at the top. And as soon as you spend up to 21 skill points in each one of these skill point trees, uh, the bottom trees are going to unlock automatically so you can get your might and precision at the very bottom. Now, it's not like you can choose your straight might. It's might slash precision. But uh, this helps you get an extra 25 plus might per uh, three of these uh, spec ins that you do. You can only spec into this three times. And uh, pretty much, yeah, that's what you guys are going to want to do when it comes to getting the bottom trees unlocked. You're going to want to at least spend uh, 21 skill points in the uh, trees at the top. Uh, don't worry about getting the one-handed mastery or any of those masteries. If you're specking for the stats at the bottom, if you don't use weapon mastery with your Grandor Mass Terror, just pretty much spend 21 skill points end this tree, unlock the stats at the bottom, get your might and precision, and continue doing so forth and so on in other trees. So pretty much, after you are done doing all of that, uh, I'm going to go and teach you guys exactly uh, trinket-wise how to get your damage up and pretty much what to use uh, for getting extra damage out if you're using like three bots like I use or even if you're using one bot, I'll still show you guys all the trinkets that you guys should be using for DPS to help you get more damage out. Uh, now, I'm not going to be including as well, uh, I'm not going to be including the Blossom 
uh, that a lot of people use to get the fake damage out. I'm not going to be including that. I'm going to be including things that you guys should be using to get damage out uh, as pretty much a whole. Uh, that's just mainly off of you and not off of fake damage. Uh, so we're going to move over to that now. And yeah, let's go ahead and move on. Alright guys, so moving on to the next one that I'm going to be showing to you guys is the trinkets. Now these trinkets include two extra trinkets that uh, I use and that pretty much every other DPS uses. I have the fighter's compartment trinket and the heartbreak trinket. You will not be able to get the heartbreak trinket because this was from the Valentine's Day event. If you do have it, great. If you don't, uh, there's a substitute. You could probably use maybe the Boo Jr. You could use uh, pretty much anything that has might added onto it. If you have the summertime event uh, pets that give might to you when you pop them, you can use those as well. But uh, pretty much, yes, I use the Heartbreak Trinket, Fighter's Compartment Trinket, and you know the Warrior's Ornament Device, which gives me 2,187 uh, might, 2,243 precision. I have my Zeus's Heavenly Lightning Amulet, which is the orbital. You don't need to have this. You could use just your regular orbital strike. Uh, you could use your regular backup. Whatever backup's comfortable to you really doesn't matter. And you could use your supply drop as well. If you have the crystal, the new one, or if you have this one, it doesn't matter. Uh, pretty much these are the trinkets that I use when it comes to damage. Now, if you are following off of the three bot clip that you see that I have in my video uh, on the bottom left, what you guys are going to want to do is whenever you're, per se, let's like uh, put two of these in real quick. Let's say like you're running a raid and, you know, both of your things are on cooldown. Let's say like your supply drop and your orbital are on cooldown and you're running through the raid and you're fighting and, you know, after you're done killing a set of ads and let's say you go into like a cutscene or you're going into a part of the raid where they're talking and nothing's going on what you're going to want to do is while those things are on cooldown and you know the people are talking doing the little dialogue that they're doing and everybody's waiting to go on to the next part to do damage uh you're going to want to go and just automatically swap out uh one of the trinkets and it's not letting me use it right now. You're going to want to swap out one of the trinkets. And you're going to want to call them in. One by one. Uh, before they're done doing their dialogue. So when you go on to the next part. You'll already have your buffs up. And you know pretty much. You won't be losing damage. You'd be gaining it in as well. It's not like you know. While you're switching in your inventory. People are going to be able to be doing more damage than you. Because you'll have uh your backups and your trinkets and everything already active my backup needs to be purchased too i know that's i have two of them but uh pretty much yeah that's what you guys are going to want to do if there's ever dialogue and you have extra little trinkets and you're using this bot clip even per se so if you have none of these bots and you're running with four trinkets it's still very useful for you guys to swap out trinkets as well as uh you know anything that you have in your arsenal to help you do more damage uh when it comes to you and the raids so pretty much, yes, that's exactly what you guys want to do when it comes to trinkets. And pretty much after this, I'm going to be showing you guys the uh, invisibility loadout, which you can also play with when it comes to using the bot clipping and everything. I don't need to explain any more when it comes to uh, going and doing extra damage. But uh, other than that, if you made it this far in the video, you've been following everything I've been letting you guys know about. Obviously, I'm putting timestamps down in the description as well in the comment section. And, uh, you know, you guys already know that we timestamp this whole entire video. Uh, good for you that you made it this far. Uh, thank you for watching up to here. And we're going to move on to the next loadout with Mental. So, uh, yeah, when I tell you guys that I'm making the ultimate loadout for you guys and telling you every single thing that I do, every little secret, everything about me, uh, you know, just use this to your best. It's really hard for some people to learn this kind of stuff. But uh, if you're a quick learner, take practice, practice this loadout, you're done with this loadout, and uh, we're going to move over to the stealth one right now, and yeah, let's go ahead and get right into it, guys. Alright guys, moving on to the next thing that I'll be showing you guys, if you guys have made it this far in the video, once again, thank you uh, for watching this far, and I hope that this loadout and guide is really helping you a lot when it comes to mental. So moving on to the next thing I'll be showing you guys, this is going to be the stealth uh loadout which is pretty much you're going to be replacing your psychic resonance with stealth 
and you're going to be putting your psychic resonance inside of your stealth as well as uh, you're going to be putting mass hysteria in your stealth and you're going to be putting menace in your stealth now uh, as you guys saw in the beginning of the video or during uh, one part of the video I was explaining to you guys that you could use either supercharged mass hysteria 3 or critical menace 3 uh, to pretty much get extra damage off if you use mass hysteria 3 it gives you less crits but uh, it'll help you getting supercharged more or if you use critical menace it'll give you more crits and probably pretty much it'll help you do more damage overall so like I said earlier if I were you guys it's whatever you guys want to choose but if I were you I prefer that you get critical menace 3 for it is the best one to choose when you're doing powers outside uh, I mean inside of your stealth so to go ahead and start off with this uh, you guys are want to go over to your loadouts you want to go to damage and you want to head all the way over to where your psychic res is which should be on R2 triangle or on number six and pretty much you're going to want to go swap that with invisibility and after you go and throw invisibility in you're going to want to back out of that go into invisibility and you're going to want to get exactly everything that you see that I have here. You want to get Mass Hysteria, you want to get Menace, you want to get Mass Terror, and you want to get Psychic Resonance. Now, uh, after you guys are done getting all four of these things, after you're done getting Mass Hysteria, Menace, Mass Terror, and Psychic, Mass Terror, Mass Terror, and Psychic Resonance, I'm going to go ahead and teach you guys exactly what to do with these uh, four things. So after you guys are done going and getting all four of these things inside of your stealth, uh, what you guys are going to want to do is before you start off any boss fight, now I'm going to show you guys exactly how to use this on boss fights first. Uh, let's say you're sitting there on a boss fight and you know there's really nothing going on, everybody's waiting for the tank to do something, and uh, you know you're pretty much waiting to you know start off on your damage. Uh, what you guys should do is always sit inside of your stealth. Because the longer that you are sitting in stealth, once you have popped it the first time, is probably going to be decreasing the time of the stealth outside of your uh, invisibility. So you can use it again automatically when you come back out. Now what I mean is, is let's say I'm going to start my loadout off. I'm going to use Menace first, Psychic Res, Mass Terror. And as you guys can see on the right, on the bottom right of my screen, stealth is off of cooldown again. Now, if I go back into stealth again, though, and I use mass tear again, it's on cooldown. So, if you guys want to, like, sneak that extra little uh, mass tear out, and you want to get that damage, what I suggest you guys do is, like, right when you hit a boss room, automatically jump into your stealth and wait. Wait for, you know, the boss to do his thing, or, you know, just pretty much, hopefully hope that, uh, I'm not the boss, hopefully hope that the tank is, um, you know taking his time on some parts of this you know sometimes it really won't happen much you know because everyone wants to get through raids pretty quick but that's a little tip that you guys can go and do when it comes to you doing damage with uh, mental on boss fights now when it comes to people uh, the guys who I've explained to all of you uh, who are using the weapon mastery with the grand door and the mass terror the way uh, that I want you guys to use this, instead of using this on boss fights, what you guys are going to want to do when you use this weapon mastery uh, exploit is pretty much, rather it be if you're on ads or a boss, if your stealth is off of cooldown and you're interested in using uh, weapon mastery, I mean you can do it whenever you want, but I suggest using it on ads only. Uh, what you guys are going to want to do if you still want to use this exploit is pretty much uh, you're going to hit the grand door. Uh, pretty much the same exact thing instead of uh, when you're hitting the mass terror you're going to want to jump straight into stealth pop your psychic resonance and you're going to go into automatically doing your loadout that way uh, while if you're on a boss fight you could do the same exact thing but I suggest you do the uh, stealth tip that I taught you guys uh, just like now where you can get, instead of having, you know, your regular three mass terrors, you can do four of them if the uh, stealth comes off a of cooldown before the tank starts to fight. So, other than that, that will be your stealth loadout that you guys are uh, pretty much going to be working on and learning, um, practicing if you are going to be practicing off of this. And uh, pretty much, yeah, other than that, uh, I think I've shown you guys pretty much everything that I need to show you through the entire video. 
Uh, I'm pretty sure people are going to be wondering, because uh, I didn't show you guys how to use the long range loadout. Uh, if you made it this far, if not, it's all good. I'm pretty sure people will still figure it out. Uh, when it comes to you using the long range for uh, all of this, all you want to do is replace your mass terror with mass levitation. Mass levitation is your long range version of mass terror pretty much. And with mass lev, let's go ahead and switch everything back out to the basic loadout. Uh, all you're pretty much going to be doing is instead of hitting him like right where he is, you're going to be hitting him from all the way back here. Uh, but take note that using mass levitation, even though it may seem a lot easier, it will decrease your damage by a significant amount. So if I were you guys and you're focused on getting all that damage out and getting that extra uh, boost of damage and raids to you know keep up with your friends or if you're doing a DPS comp and you actually want to go and make sure that you do not lose, never use mass uh, levitation. Always use mass terror. Keep an eye out on those grand doors. Uh, as a whole, guys, pretty much, you know, follow the trinkets, follow the bots, follow the weapon masteries, follow the one-handed and the moving around really quickly, exactly like this. Follow all of these things. Uh, master all of these things. Master survivability even when it comes to you standing in certain places to stay alive longer. Master every single one of these things. And uh, I promise you guys, you'll be at least one of the best on this game when it comes to using... Uh, mental or I mean even like any other power survivability wise you know you do these things with mental you know you go ahead and you know master everything I've shown you and you guys will be awesome other than that uh, this is probably the most detailed uh, loadout slash guide that I've ever made uh, I'm gonna be adding in some gameplay as well showing you guys exactly how I use my loadout when it comes to doing raids and uh, other than that, if you guys made it this far, thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, pretty much going and learning all of this if you are learning it up to this point. As always, leave a like, comment, subscribe. I've worked really hard on this for you guys. You know, I was thinking of ways to do this. I've took so many takes when it came to making this video to uh, try to explain things as best I possibly could. Uh, I'm deciding not to throw any music into this video right now. I'm going to be going in pretty much having it so it is explained to you guys very smoothly through the whole thing and uh i'll throw music on the part of the example but other than that congratulations if you guys have gotten it down if it's like your 50th time first time second you know whatever time it is watching this trying to practice how to do this loadout uh pretty much welcome back again and uh you know congratulations guys on learning how to like <laughs> master this but other than that I'm uh, making it sound like you went through like a 30-day training program or whatever. But anyway, uh, Soji Mentor TGN, thank you guys for watching up to this far. Uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video I make. Peace out, guys. And I'll